Hi everyone, this is Matt Ingram continuing with Replication 4A. This is the geographically weighted regression of uh, an analysis of the effect of terrorism on economic growth originally reported in the Journal of Peace Research in 2010. This is the second video in the portion of the analysis that's in GEODA and GWR4, the standalone software program uh, for geographically weighted regression analysis. Uh, in the first previous video of this replication, we had advanced far into the exercise um, with regards to the steps of the of the replication. We had replicated figure four. We had uh, generated centroids in Geoda and extracted the x y coordinates that form the grid reference. Uh, that's uh, that's at the core of any geographically weighted regression analysis. We've exported that as a CSV file, uh, imported that into our analysis in in GWR4 and then uh, generated an OLS uh, set of results and the GWR results and then we were examining those results in GWR we we, we were in GWR4 and we had looked at the uh, casewise output uh, the CSV file that's generated in GWR4 and we were trying to map those local coefficients uh, that were generated, that were outputted into that CSV file of case-wise results. We were trying to visualize those results, those local coefficients, in the form of uh, maps. So how might we go about doing that? Uh, basically we want to take these results. This is the original set of results here. Uh, we want to take all of these results. The, here we see, for instance, the local coefficient for terrorism, the standard error, and the t-value. Uh, one thing we could do, and this is what the authors originally do in the paper, is they map simply the coefficients. Uh, this is informative, and, and this is, this is uh, certainly a, a good step. For instance, that looks like uh, that uh, visualization, the, the original article will load in just a second, looks like this if we go to the final maps. Um, here we're looking at the final set of maps. So figure 5 here maps the local coefficients of per capita income. Here's their key value of interest on the right, the local distrib the local coefficients of terrorism. And you see that they're all they're all uh, reported here, right? There, there is no distinction made between significant and non-significant coefficients. This is good, and you you could do this. That would be that would be simply a matter of reporting these estimates: the estimate of T, or the estimate of education, or in the case of base income, right? That's this is the map on the left here. Um, you'd re be reporting the excuse me the estimate of base, or the estimate of terrorism, the estimate of education, the estimate of government expenditures, or the estimate of the coastal dummy. A more informative map, uh, one that I would prefer, I would encourage you to to prefer as well, is to is one that differentiates between the statistically significant and the statistically non-significant local coefficients. So how might we do that? Uh, one way to do that is to work within the CSV file. What I've done is convert the C save the CSV file as an Excel file. You can see up at the top, I've just I've renamed it. So in the in the GWR output, I've taken this file and simply renamed it so that I can work with it in Excel. And then over on the right, I've created a set, a new set of variables, two for each predictor, two for base, two for terrorism, two for education, and so on. The first one that I've created is the uh, local coefficient that's significant at the 95% level, the, the standard 95% level. And the second one is is a little bit less standard, a little less, a little more unconventional. The the local coefficient that's significant at the ninety percent level. Now, how have we done this, or how did I do this? Uh, let's let's focus on terrorism here, for instance, since that's their key theoretical variable. At the ninety five percent level, I've basically made this variable equal if the absolute value of m two which is the t-value for terrorism. If the absolute value of the t-value is greater than 1.96, this column takes the value of k2, which is the estimate, the local coefficient, 
if it's not greater than 1.96, that is, if it's if the t value is not if the absolute value of the t value is is not greater than 1.96, then it's equal to zero. So in this column, essentially, zeros communicate non-significance, and if it's non-zero, if the value is non-zero, it communicates statistical significance. So here you can see that at the 95% level, in the GWR4 portion of the analysis, only in the in unit 26 is terrorism significant at the 95% level. In several of your, if we move to the 90% confidence level, you see that terrorism uh, has a statistically significant effect in a few more units, maybe about a, a dozen uh, units. And so on for base income in 1987, for education, for government expenditures, and for the coastal dummy variable. So this is one way of of uh, doing this uh, a conversion by hand, basically going into the actual CSV output from GWR4, converting that CSV output into an Excel file that you can work with a little bit more with formulas and change formats, etc. Uh, and then uh, generate these new variables uh, based on the absolute value of the T value and the value of the local coefficient. That's one way you can do this. This works with smaller data sets. Uh, smaller models where you're not having to do a, a whole bunch of work by hand. In this particular data set, this is not that hard. 67 spatial units, uh, five or six predictors, that's not too hard. If you have a very large data set or large models or multiple models, you're going to want to uh, create more of a system here. That's where uh, scripts come in handy. And so what I've done here is written a script in R that you can use to do this conversion in a, in a faster way, or if you need to do it repeatedly or with larger data sets, you can do so. So the first thing you want to do, let's just clear the console here. The first thing you want to do is, is set your working directory to where your shapefile is. You could list your files there. Here we see that our shapefile merge 3, the base shapefile is there. So we want to load that in the same way that we would normally. If you have any questions about these particular commands, uh, then then please see the R script for the R portion of the uh, replication. But here, if we hit Control R with our file path in mind and the read OGR command, we can load our shape file. We can then load the CSV, the output from GWR4, by switching our working directory to the GWR output. Here you can see now that the output list-wise is listed there. That's our basic output from GWR4. We're then going to create a new object called GWR out by reading that CSV file. So let's execute that and then look at that file. That's it's a little bit more it's a little bit easier to digest the information if we just look at the names in the header and there we see that we have all of our basic names from the GWR output. If we were just interested in a single uh, column, we could call that column, and that's the column of the local coefficients for base income in 1987. So we can call each individual column here and of local coefficients and load them into the shapefile. And that's what this next block of command does. If we look at the first two lines, we see that we're creating a new variable called base95, and we're going to create that variable or that column vector in the shape file, and we're going to make that equal to the local coefficient for base from the GWR4 output. We are then going to recode that variable as zero if the absolute value of the t value for base is less than or equal to 1.96. So here in the first line, we're making it equal to the local coefficient, and then we're replacing those values with zero if they're statistically non-significant. We then do the same thing with a terrorism uh, variable, the same thing with education, the same thing with government expenditures, and the same thing with a coastal identity. So let's do, let's run all of this lines. We see it execute on the left, and we can then call the header or the names of the shapefile and we see that they have been added. Right Here is base 95, T95, E95, etc. We can do the same thing then at the 95, at the 90 percent confidence interval, excuse me. Uh, what happened here? Let's 
load this up and control run there you see it and now we can pull the names so here's now base 95 through coastal 95 and then base 90 through coastal 90 we then might want to change the the file path to our working directory again and we see that that was uh, successful and then write out the new <coughs> shape path with the new variables following that path to the file to the to our working directory the file path and call it this new name using this driver uh, so if we do that well, you see that it's it's already exists basically it won't replace an existing file um, but it's already in here if we go into working we see that I, I already did it earlier when I was uh, testing this uh, one thing we could do is just to uh, delete the whole thing and let's see if it saves delete yes and so now let's write it out it's not existing anymore so it saves it and there it is again so now we can import this new a revised shapefile into something like ArcGIS or QGIS or even Geoda and um, and map those variables. Uh, so in ArcGIS for instance we could load this shapefile there it is and we could create a map uh, excuse me, properties it's a little bit slow today we can create a properties a, a map, excuse me, with say the terrorism variable at 95% level and uh, let's see, let's make this cut off minus point or is it all zeros so anything other than zero if it's zero if they're all zeros it should be um, all dark blue and indeed it's all dark blue except sorry for that one unit remember that one unit unit 26 which is statistically significant. So this one unit in the southeast is statistically significant at the 95% level in the GWR4 analysis. We could redo the map for any one of our 95% level predictors, base, T95, E95, G95, but basically we've got them now here in a way that distinguishes among the statistically significant uh, variables. So here's base 95 into a five category set of colors and there you see base income statistically significant always has a negative effect um, <coughs> um, except on the we might want to distinguish a little bit more here instead of including zero but we could compare that say to these models over here uh, again it, it looks in this model like it's always negative the strongest magnitude the, the, the most negative say uh, effect is in the far east which is what our, uh, excuse me, that's not what our model says. Our model says the most negative effect is in the middle here, uh, so around here, say, in this map. So anyhow, this is illustrating how you might take the, the uh, output from GWR4 and either convert it by hand into data that uh, distinguishes between significant and non-significant values of local coefficients, or use a program like R to make that distinction and to output a new shapefile that you could then import into any other uh, GIS software like ArcGIS, QGIS, or even Geoda and generate some maps. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, thank you very much.